we just discussed the motional emf and we saw that if these are two parallel rails and i have a sliding rail that moves like this and the and the magnetic field was into the board then we saw that it will have a circulating current in 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 the clockwise direction right in the clockwise direction fine fine now what now let us try to analyze it further fine let us say let us say that that this is p and q and r and s fine and let us say that pq has some resistance while these qr rs and sp they do not have any resistance fine so let resistance of pq be equal to r and resistance of of qr rs and sp is nil okay that is nil fine now what happens now what happens we saw that there will be an emf induced and that emf which we call motional emf that is equal to b into l into v right so due to the leftward movement of the wire pq we have an induced emf of of how much of <coughs> blv that we had derived right now what is the current due to that therefore current in the loop pqrs becomes blv upon r is it not that is blv upon r so what is the power dissipated therefore power dissipated in the loop is how much hmm what do we think it is what is power i square r joules joules law of heating i square r so that is that is current i is that so it is b l v upon r whole square into r which is b square l square v square upon r square into r which is b square l square v square upon r so this is the power dissipated and and what is this what is this power this is electrical power dissipated right electrical power dissipated correct 
Now, let us see. Due to the current I here, whose magnitude now is known to me, we had seen that this rod faces a force in that direction. Correct? It faces a force in this direction. Let us try to find out that force. Fine? Force F acting on the rod PQ is what? I L cross B is it not? Now what is the angle between L and B? L is this, B is that. So that is nothing but I L B sin 90. What is sin 90? Sin 90 is 1. So it is I L B. That is the force. The length here is incidentally the same as L that we had kept, right? Otherwise L would have represented the length which could be say some other literal. Okay? some other literal. So, it is ILB. Correct? Do we, do we understand that? And that is equal to, what is my I? I is BLV by R. So, it is BLV upon R into L into B. So, that is B square L square V by R. This is the force. Now, what is the mechanical power that I'm that I'm inputting? What is the mechanical power being inputted? <clears throat> what is mechanical power that you are inputting? What is the formula for mechanical power? Rate of change of work, fine. What is work? Work is force into displacement. displacement. So force into displacement is work and divided by T is that. So it is actually F V. F into V is power. So, so F is that. So F into V. Now what is that? Otherwise it is F dot V. Fine, F dot V, but since the angle between F and V is the same, so, so it is F V cos 0, which is equal to F into V, which is equal to D square L square V upon R into V, which is equal to B square L square V square upon R. This is the mechanical power input. Now you compare the equation 1 and the equation 2. Let us try to compare the equation 1 and equation 2. What do you get? Now let, let, me, let me first clarify certain things about this. When I say this force is F and I am still, I am still, I am still pushing it to the left, what am I doing? I am doing so without without this gaining any velocity. So I push with a force that is infinitesimally greater than F. That's why I have taken my applied force to be the same as the force that was opposing my movement. You should be very clear about that. How am I able to push it to the left? Because I'll have to apply a force that is greater than this. Then only you'll be able to push it. Otherwise, it will not allow you to push. Correct. 
now i am doing so i am doing so by applying a force that is just slightly greater than this fine just slightly greater than this so that's why that's why is yes. you, you you know my velocity is a constant do you see that i am moving with a constant velocity it means there is no acceleration it means there is no unbalanced force so if i apply a force that is suddenly greater than this f i'll start accelerating you know i'll start accelerating so my velocity will start going up i do not want that to happen newton's first law what does it say when there is no unbalanced force hmm a body in a state of rest or in a state of uniform motion continues to do so until and unless acted upon by an external unbalanced force hmm it is considered a big crap in our country first law it means nothing it is one of the most vital things that you can come across most vital yesterday we were doing doing a question from class 11th and and p p p p people got stuck there only hmm in the first law so so you understand what is happening what has happened whatever mechanical power i am inputting the same power is getting dissipated do we see that so my mechanical power input and the electrical power output are the same normally my input will be more why because there is inevitably some dissipation in the in the system so for example it 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 will be so that there will be a friction between this the sliding wire and the rail on which it is moving that friction will consume some of your energy hmm that will get dissipated right so what happens therefore 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 the electrical power output is equal to the mechanical power input get that point the electrical power output is equal to the mechanical power input and what happens due to that energy so that tells me that that this is this tells me that the energy is conserved correct that the energy is conserved we get the point fine there is another interesting relationship that arises from the manipulation of these equations we have e as or mod e as del phi b upon del t right i am taking the mod of it okay now this is also equal to i r is it not and i is what del q upon del t into r is it not now if i if i equate this is ohm's law right this is ohm's now if i equate them hmm equating we get we get what delta q upon delta t into r is equal to delta phi b upon delta t now what does that tell you that tells you that delta q is equal to delta phi b upon r interesting relation 
the change in magnetic flux divided by the resistance gives you the change in charge that is the amount of charge that has passed a given cross section hmm? hold this in mind it might come handy while solving a problem or two okay okay this is delta phi b okay we understand Hmm? Yeah. No, but but there you know uh, d phi. You will have to write d phi by dq is equal to r. No, mm -hmm. d phi upon dq is equal to r. You can write that. No issues. Fine. 